What's going on guys? John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use Excel with Kinter and Python. Alright guys, like I said in this video, we're going to look at using Excel spreadsheets with Kinter. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, in this video, we're going to look at using Excel spreadsheets in Kinter. So maybe you've got data in Kinter in your Kinter app and you want to save it, but you don't really want to use a whole database. You just want to slap it in a spreadsheet. Maybe you've got data that's already in a spreadsheet and want to pull that out and use it in your Kinter app for some reason. That's what we're going to kind of look at. So I've got this basic spreadsheet. It's got some names and some favorite pizzas. We can get column A, which is all these things. Click the button. Boom, it grabs all those things. We want column B. We click this button. Uh, and this is just an example of pulling data out. Obviously, once you have this data, you can do anything you want with it. And uh, maybe we'll start to look at that. But this is basically what we're going to look at in this video, how to connect to this thing, how to uh, start to use these things. Now, I'm going to have a whole course on Python and Excel probably in the future very soon. So if you want to learn this in a lot more detail, you can check that out in the next week or so. But uh, this is just going to sort of get started and just basically show us some of the things that we can use. Now, we're going to use a library called OpenPyXL in order to do this. And it's completely free, but we need to install it. So let's head over to our terminal. And first thing we want to do is pip install OpenPyXL. Now, this is all one word. I've already installed it, so you know, I get a little message saying, hey, you've already got it. But you should be able to, you know, it'll go through and do all the installation stuff. Just take a second and that's all there is to it. So now we've got a file called spreadsheet.py. It's our basic Kinter starter code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal as always. So in order to use OpenPy Excel, we need to import a few things from it. And I should mention, let me pull up our spreadsheet again. In OpenPy Excel, you have two basic things. You have workbooks and worksheets. And the workbook is sort of like the Excel file. It's this whole thing, right? Think of that as the workbook. The worksheets are these guys down here. See this tab, it says sheet one. We can have sheet two, sheet three, all these things. These are worksheets, right? So if you're familiar with spreadsheets, you understand this is sort of how, you know, spreadsheets work. You've got your workbook and your worksheet. So in order to use OpenPy Excel, we need to import a couple of things from it that deal with workbooks and worksheets. So let's go from OpenPy Excel uh, dot workbook. We want to import workbook and oops, there we go. Capital W on there. Make sure every time I do that, it wants to make it lowercase for some reason automatically. So make sure that's a an uppercase W right there. And we also need from open pie Excel. Uh, we want to import load underscore work book. And this will allow us to open an Excel file that's already been created, right? So this will allow us to sort of create workbooks on our own. This will allow us to access spreadsheets that already exist. So, okay, let's come down here. And the first thing you want to do with OpenPy Excel is always create a workbook instance. And the convention is to name it WB, short for workbook. And we, so we can just go WB equals workbook and then just set it like that. Just an instance of capital W workbook, right? So then we can load something that already exists. Now, like I said, I've got this spreadsheet. I called it pizza.xlsx, and I saved this in our GUI directory. And if you'll come down here, remember we've done all of our stuff in this C GUI directory, and since it's in there, we can use a relative path to load it. So we can do that just by coming down here, and let me comment this, uh, create workbook instance, and let's say load existing workbook, right? So to do that, we go WB equals, and we call this load underscore workbook, which is this guy right up here. Whereas this is obviously coming from this, right? So load work workbook, and this is a function, and we could just call pizza.xlsx, which is a basic, you know, Excel spreadsheet file extension. Now, remember, I put this in our GUI directory so we can use a relative path. Otherwise, you would have to use, you know, C, forward or wherever it was, a forward slash like that. But since this is in the same file that our spreadsheet.py file is in, we could just use the relative path like that. So, okay, finally, we need to sell it 
which worksheet we're using in that workbook. So we, uh, let's just say, uh, create active worksheet. And we're gonna call this WS, short for worksheet, right? And that's just gonna be wb.active. So this is gonna be the active worksheet of this workbook. And if we look at this, you know, we, we've got these two things. Sheet one is obviously the active one. That's the one we want it to be active. So actually we can kind of, well, we just leave these out. Okay, so now if we wanna actually pull data out of here, how do we do it? Well, let's create some variables. Let's go uh, create variable for column A. And I'm just gonna call this column underscore A, call it anything you want. And this is from the worksheet, our active worksheet, right? This WS, and we can use square brackets. And I say, I just wanna call, I wanna pull everything from column A. So I could just call A, just like that. And we could do the same thing if we want for column B. Now there are several ways to grab data. You can grab individual cells. Uh, you can grab whole columns. You can call it, grab whole rows. You can iterate through columns in different ways. You can iterate through rows in different ways. And these are some of the things I'll talk about in the course when I create this course in the next week or so. Uh, but for now, we're just gonna very simply pull everything from column A and column B and assign it to these two variables, right? So if we wanna print out, let's just say print uh, column underscore A, right? And let's just save this and run this guy. So this is spreadsheet.py. So we can go Python spreadsheet.py. And when we do, you know, nothing happens here, but if we close this, it'll print out that column A. And you'll notice we've got cell sheet A, A1, A2, A3, and those obviously correspond with, so this is column A1, A2, A3, etc. But if we look at this, this isn't that useful. This is, these are just pulling out, you know, sort of instances of these things, right? If we actually want to see the things in here, actually, let's run this guy again real quick. And close it. You'll see this is a tuple, right? These round brackets. If we copy this and head back over here to our code and just kind of for fun, paste it to look and see what we got here. We've got a tuple and it's, the items in there are separated by commas. So uh, tuples, just like list, if we want the things inside of them, we have to actually loop through that. So we can do that. So let's go, actually first, let's create a couple buttons. So button underscore, let's go BA for column A uh, equals a button. And we want that in root and we want the text to equal column A or maybe get column A. And we want to give this a command of, let's just call this get A, right? And then we can ba dot pack, and let's give this a pad Y of 20, just to push down the screen a little bit. And I'm just going to copy this whole thing. And let's call this one BB for button B. And let's get column B. And let's call this get B. And we'll pack this guy as well. So. Let's create a couple of these functions real quick. So let's go define get A. So we've got column A, this variable, and it's a tuple and we wanna loop through it. So, so let's go for cell in column A, create a for loop, right? And let's just, uh, for now, let's just print a cell. And if we want to see the actual value of the cell instead of that sort of instance, that we saw when we looped through it earlier, these, you know, these guys, right? We can call dot value. So let's just do this real quick. And we also need to define get underscore B, but for now, let's just pass this guy. So let's save this and run, see what this looks like. So if we get column A and then close this guy, it prints out the names of column A, the actual values instead of these weird looking things. So, okay. Now, really, we can just, instead of printing these, let's output these into a label. So let's come down here and let's call this one label underscore A, and that's a label. We wanna put it in root. We want the text to equal, equal nothing to begin with. And let's go label underscore A dot pack. And let's give this a pad Y of 20, push it down the screen. And we wanna put this one underneath our button A there. 
Let's create another one called label B and do the same thing under our button B. So now we've got these labels, we can actually do something with them. So inside of this function, let's create a variable called list to keep track of all these names, right? Because we want to output them into a label. So we can just make this variable. So let's go list equals and let's call this an F string. And inside of here, we want to pull uh, whatever is list plus the string value of cell dot value. Oops, cell. There we go. So cell is just each item in our loop, right? And what we're saying here is, hey, every time we loop through this thing, add a name to this variable, keep whatever's in there and then add in another thing. And then we also want a line break for each one. So this will loop through there, add each of these names to this thing. Now when we're done with our looping, so outside of the loop, we can just go label a dot config. And let's go text equals list. So okay, that looks good. Now let's do the same thing for B. And let's see, but instead of column A, we want column B. And instead of label A, we want label B. So okay, that looks good. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this and run it. Pull this over, we can get column A, boom, there's all of our names. You call them B, boom, there's the favorite pizzas. So, okay, that's just that simple. So just remember when you're pulling things out, you're pulling like for a whole column, you're pulling a whole column, obviously you need to loop through those things. So it's just a basic for loop or really any loop that you want. So, okay, that's how you pull stuff out. Now really quickly, how are we doing on time? It is Friday, okay, good on time. Let's really, really quickly, I'll show you how to add something to the spreadsheet. So if we look at our spreadsheet real quick, we can see, uh, the last row is row eight. So let's say we want to put something in A8 and B8. So let's say we want to put Fred and let's say Fred likes cheese pizza. How could we do that? Well, it's really, really simple. We would just come down here and let's see. This is how we pulled stuff out. We kind of do the same thing to put stuff in. We just reference something like this. So WS and then these square brackets. So let's come down here and let's go, let's add Fred to A8 and B8. So we just go WS and then these square brackets. And then what do we want? Well, we want A8. And what do we want to do? We want to turn it to equal Fred. And then we want WS B8 to equal Fred's favorite pizza, which I guess is what, cheese? So. This will do that, but it won't actually save the file. Now we, in order to actually save this, we need to actually, you know, save the file. So let's go save new file. And I don't want to save it as, let's say pizza.xlsx, you could, but I don't want to overwrite our old file. So let's just create a whole new file and save it as that. So we could go wb.save and this is a function and then just name the thing. So let's just call this pizza2.xlsx. So if we go ahead and save this and run it, we can see our thing comes up and we don't have to actually do anything. It's already gonna save that on there. Uh, let's see, so if we close this, now if I come over here, open up, let's see our GUI directory, there's our pizza2 file that we just created. We open this, we see now Fred and Cheese are in row eight for A and B, just that simple. So like I said, it is Friday here in Vegas. Very excited for the weekend. What are you guys up to this weekend? Leave some comments below. Tell me what you guys are gonna be doing for the weekend. I have no plans, absolutely no plans. It has been a crazy, we've been remodeling and stuff. And oh man, I'm tired. I think I might just take it easy this week and <laughs> maybe read a book or something. I don't know, we'll see. Might do some hiking, who knows. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. So you pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 45 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.